Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. And we especially welcome Captains Jeff and Jackie Milkins, who will be leading our meeting this morning. They've come all, all the way from Hobart. Uh, I, re <laughs> I remember when I was on THQ, the, uh, an officer came to prayer as he was speaking and uh, they said to him, uh, thank you very much for making the effort to come to THQ. And his response was, it's always an effort for me to come to THQ. <laughs> well, I hope it's not too much of an effort for you to come this morning. Just a couple of announcements. Um, Christmas is coming. Have, had you heard? <laughs> yeah. It's on the 25th of December this year. Um, but before that, uh, we have our carol service on the 15th. And that starts at 4.30 with a barbecue. And then the meeting itself will be at 5.30. So don't come at 10 o'clock on the 15th because you're bound to be disappointed. There'll be no one here. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the collecting rosters are out. I'm not sure whether they'll be in the cafe this morning, but if you uh, would especially like to volunteer, just see me after the meeting. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. To start our worship today, we're starting off with a psalm. Psalm 100, as a call to worship. So no matter how you got here this morning, whether it was rushed, whether it was really, really nice and paced, whether you've had a fabulous week or one that you'd rather forget, let's take the time to pause, to concentrate and listen into this psalm and to make sure we're concentrating on the reason why we're here, to connect with God this morning. Psalm 100, a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. If it's comfortable for you, uh, if you would like to stand for our first song this morning, yet not I, but through Christ in me.
I hope my sin has been defeated. Jesus, now and never is my need. When the chains are released, I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. great way to start our worship time today. It's great standing here and hearing all the united voices united in praise for our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we share a prayer today? Precious Jesus, we've come into this place today to give our full attention to you. Lord, we have, we've come into this place and you have brought us together to sing our united praises to you, to lift up your holy name, to bless you and pour all our love and our affection upon you. Lord, we praise you for all that you've done. We praise you for what you're doing now and we praise you for what you will do in the future. Lord, we give you the most praise of all because of your death on the cross that brought life for all of us. So Lord, as we've come together today, we pray, Lord God, that you will be glorified first and foremost in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Move in this place freely. Move in amongst us freely today. Move in us and use us for your glory. Lord, we are here for you and for you alone. So, Lord, we offer you this time, we offer you this worship, and we offer you ourselves today. And we ask that you take all of that and use it to see your kingdom grow and your glory be proclaimed in this city of Manchester. And we pray in Jesus' beautiful and precious name. Amen. I'm going to uh, play a lovely song that's come out of City of Light Church that you may not know so well, but if you, do, if you know it, please sing with us. If you don't, just uh, soak in the atmosphere and in the presence of the Lord today as we sing only a holy God. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else can make every king bow down? Who else can whisper darkness trembles only a holy God what other beauty demands such praises what other splendor outshines the sun what other majesty rules with justice only a holy Father, the 
could rescue me from my failings, who else could offer his only son, who else could match me to call you father, only a holy God, only a holy God. Come So, Lord, be glorified today in this place, we pray. In Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats, except for the songsters, because they're now going to bring their message to our service today.
I, uh, I feel like I need to ask for an encore for that one. That was fantastic. Thank you to the Songsters. Uh, the Songsters are still a brigade. Do we call the Songster Brigade here? Yeah. Thank you to the Songster Brigade for their message that they brought to the service. And thank you to the piano player for uh, working hard this morning. <laughs> So, excellent. Well, it's nice to be here today. I haven't um, conducted a meeting here before. We were talking about this morning and we've never actually done a meeting or a service here. I've been here plenty of times, but uh, what's that, sorry? Oh, the peanut gallery's starting already. This is going well. Okay, look out. (laughs) Is that how it is up here? All right, I might go back to Hobart then. Uh, It's great to be here and to be sharing with you today as we come together and bring our praises to our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that our colleagues around the state are doing just the same right now, except for our uh, call where we sold you a slack and start at 10.30. So um, it's great to, uh, to know that our friends all over the state are also doing the same thing as us today. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we came up yesterday and had a nice easy drive, no road work on the Midlands, hallelujah, (laughs) my goodness, we used to say a flat two hours to get from our place in Berriedale up here, but when that road work started, it was almost three, it was, we were giving ourselves extra time and then we whizzed through yesterday, this is fantastic, oh well, we can have an early dinner then, excellent, but it is great to be here and great to be sharing with you today and also great to be sharing with the people that might be watching online, hello, if you're out there in the uh, internet world as well, this is also a new thing for us, so it's great to, uh, yeah, to experience all that today, but above all else to be here and to be sharing with our Lord Jesus Christ in worship today. Our scripture reading today is taken from the Old Testament, the Is it going to pop up on the screen? I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's taken from 1 Samuel chapter 7. So 1 Samuel chapter 7, if you would like to look that up. Um, Now, I'm not on Facebook. I did actually forget my Bible, so I'm reading off the the, uh, scriptures. Now, what did he say? Verses 3 through to 15. So 1 Samuel 7, verses 3 through to 15, and today I'm reading out of a New Living Translation, in case it's slightly different to the one you're reading along with. But it says this, Then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, If you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of your foreign gods and your images of Astaroth. Turn your hearts to the Lord and obey him alone. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of their images of Baal and Astaroth and worshipped only the Lord. And then Samuel told them, Gather all of Israel at Mizpah and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah and in the great ceremony drew water from the well and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. It was at Mizpah that Saul became Israel's judge. Uh, Samuel, sorry, became Israel's judge. When the Philistine rulers heard that Israel had gathered at Mizpah, they mobilized their army and advanced. The Israelites were badly frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching. Don't stop pleading with the Lord our God to save us from the Philistines, they begged Samuel. So Samuel took a young lamb and offered it to the Lord as a whole burnt offering. He pleaded with the Lord to help Israel and the Lord answered him. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day. And the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. The men of Israel chased them from Mizpah to the place below Bethkar, slaughtering them all the way. Then Samuel took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Jehanna. He named it Ebenezer, which means stone of help. For he said, up till this point, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and didn't invade Israel again for some time. And And throughout Samuel's lifetime, the Lord's powerful hand was raised against the Philistines. The Israelite villages near Ekron and Gath that the Philistines had captured were restored to Israel, along with the rest of the territory that the Philistines had taken. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites in those days. Saul continued as Israel's judge for the rest of his life. May the Lord add his blessing to that reading this morning, and we'll expand upon that shortly. But now we're going to sing again. And uh, while we head back up to the stage and I grab my guitar, I invite you to stand and join with us.
I once said, um, if I thought of all the reasons and listed them for um, why I'm grateful to God for all that he's done in my life, I would be there for months, probably. And uh, this song really captures that a little bit. 10,000 reasons. I'm sure that we could each probably, if we had the time and energy, probably think up 10,000 reasons why we want to praise the Lord. But for the sake of that, I'm sure he will accept this song in worship today instead of months spent needlessly thinking on stuff. It doesn't need to be said. So please join with us and uh, sing as we sing this lovely song, 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship is all we name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Rich in love and your flow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my love to find. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. And on. Take your seats. You will now be waited upon for your tithes and offerings. And as that's taken up, I invite any children to head out to Kids Church today.
and have a great time when you do it. So we'll take up the tithes and offerings now and be coming. Thank you very much. words, aren't they? They never, ever get old. Never, ever get old. Yes, Jesus loves them. But it's good to be reminded of that from time to time. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you again for all that we have. We recognise that all, all that we have is given by your hand. And so, Lord, today we just offer some of what we have back to you, Lord, in our financial offerings today. And Lord, we just pray that you would take these offerings, what has been offered today, and you would use them to see your kingdom grow in this wonderful place of Launceston. And we would pray, Lord, that your fame would spread and keep serving uh, humanity, suffering humanity would be served from what has been offered today, Lord. We're your people and uh, we present our offerings to you today and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So just before we open the word of the Lord again and, uh, and look at that passage a little bit more detail today. I'm going to sing a, a song that uh, hopefully you'll remember. It's quite an old song, but a beautiful song. Um, Come thou font of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, the mount of thy redeeming love. Uh, beautiful words written by a very troubled man back in, back in his lifetime. But just a beautiful song today and a beautiful piece of music. And I invite you to sing with me. You can stay seated for this song. We've got you up a few times already. But let's, uh, let's continue to worship today and use this wonderful song to praise and honour our Saviour today. Fix 
fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger Beautiful words and a beautiful song dedicated to a beautiful God. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about uh, First Samuel today. And uh, it's important before we get too much into it to just... Know where we are in the Bible. Okay, so if any of you have got your physical book of a Bible open, you'll see we're fairly, fairly early on. And uh, we're at a time in the Old Testament where the Israelite people have entered the, the Holy Land and they've started to you know, live. And uh, things have, have taken a little bit of a turn, as they often did with the Israelite people. We know from history that their relationship with God was like a yo-yo all the way through. It was up and down and up and down and up and down. But first, let me tell you about when I went bushwalking once. I walked a track called the, uh, the Lake Belcher Track in Mount Field National Park. Any of you have been, you've probably been to Mount Field, um, but it's in the other bit of the park, away from Russell Falls and all that. And uh, it was one of those tracks that doesn't get walked very often and it's really overgrown. And I think the word track was a bit of an uh, overstatement. I would say the walking bog that I walked through. My, I went in... I take a step and went into my knee on about four or five occasions on this trip. It's one of those. And that was in the middle of summer, believe it or not. So it was one of those sort of tracks. And I'm walking through scrub with the trees about this high. And there were these little orange triangles. If you've been bushwalking, you know what I'm talking about. And they're track markers. They're bright, you know, high-vis orange triangles. That's so big. And this track was so overgrown that it was one of those moments. And I was still, you know, I had my little thing to tell me, the electronic GPS thing, but it's one of those situations where I would walk and about the sight of losing, about the time of losing sight with the orange marker behind me, I would see the one in front of me. And I said to myself, given the state of play and how far I am from anyone right now, if I lose sight of that marker, I'm not going to continue because I can't see the way forward. Because that, lo- that orange triangle was my spot of remembrance. That was the point I can go back to when I know the track is there. If I look forward and I can't see it and I lose sight of the one behind me, I'm in trouble. I'm not in a good way. But as long as I could see that one and I could see that one until I could see that one, I was happy. And I'd walk to that next point of marker. And then I had a new place of remembrance. This is my 
spot zero because if all goes to pot, I know at least that orange marker represents the track and I know I'm on track. So the Israelites were off track at this point. So the Israelites had gotten into the Holy Land and set up shop and gotten very comfortable and they'd started to get a bit too comfortable with some of the uh, pagan gods of the area, some of the other gods out there that were on offer. And so a lot of the houses in ancient Israel had little little uh, idols in them to some of the pagan gods of this area. Now, they hadn't turned from God. They were just giving everyone a go. They were just, you know, taking a bit from column A and a bit from column B and a bit from column C. And, uh, and so they'd become unfaithful to God because of this. And even today, archaeologists still dig up masses of these tiny little idols that they would have had on their mantelpiece in their house. You know, some people have a little statue of Buddha or something in their place. Well, they had these little things and they would have a little altar in. And we still, to this day, are digging them up from that place where ancient, the ancient kingdom of Israel was, which tells us, historically speaking, it was still a very pagan place at various times throughout the Old Testament period. And unfortunately, this was one of those times. And because of their disobedience and because of their behaviour, their relationship with God had been damaged, with Yahweh, the one true God. That relationship had been damaged. And unfortunately for the people, some of the consequences of that was a little thing called the Philistines. The Philistines live in a place we now call, funnily enough, Gaza. Interesting, our history can repeat itself sometimes, isn't it? But the Philistines had come out of their territory and had given the Israelites one heck of a battering in battle. They had dusted them up pretty bad and uh, things were not great and so the nation recognises this and the nation recognised that they had sinned before God and so they cry out to Samuel to come and lead them and to guide them and it was this very moment that Samuel became the judge of Israel, it says in the scriptures. The people recognised that they needed to turn back to the Lord and so Samuel gathers the whole nation together And they collectively, as a nation, repent of their sins. There's a beautiful ceremony where there's water poured out before the Lord. And there's a moment of repentance that we see in Scripture that's, quite frankly, absolutely beautiful. It's fantastic. It's the people returning to God. The people saying, Lord, we have sinned before you. We have broken your commandments. We've been unfaithful by embracing these other gods, these other deities from the the surrounding peoples. Lord, we repent of that. We dispose of our idols. We chuck them out. We get them out of our house. Don't want them anywhere near us. And we dedicate ourselves to you and to you alone. And Samuel leads them in this time. And that is just fantastic. How good is that? Repentance. And uh, and the nation resets its relationship with God. Now, we could leave the story there. And that would be a great story. It would be great... uh, great thing to talk about and to preach on and you know repentance from our sin blah 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 but unfortunately we can't well fortunately unfortunately depends on how long you want the sermon to be today (laughs) but the philistines get wind of all this and all the people of israel are in one spot and they're close by let's get them reminds me of my jack russell he's a bit of an idiot (laughs) irish wolfhound let's get him right All the people are in one spot and the Philistines think now's their chance to come and finish the job. Let's go and finish them off. We've got them all together. We don't have to chase them all over the country. They're all here. We get all sorted out and head up there now. We can can finish this job once and for all. We can take over their whole land and job done. And so the Philistines um, bring their army together and come marching to Mizpah to get the uh, Israelites while they're all together in one spot. And the Israelites, who are still wounded from their last defeat at the hands of the Philistines, see this coming and freak out just a little bit. And you can quite understand that, given, you know, Goliath and all. Philistines were pretty big guys. And uh, so it was a little bit scary. And so they cry out to Samuel again, Samuel, help us. Help us. And so Samuel again takes charge of the situation. And as the leader of the people of Israel... He brings them all together and offers a sacrifice, an act of worship to the Lord. 
He brings his young lamb and he sheds its blood on the altar. And he offers this young lamb as a whole offering to the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament times, this was an act of worship. I hear a story like this, I think, dinner, not lamb chops. But this back then was an act of worship. This is how the people worshipped the Lord. They brought an offering of blood, an offering of an animal sacrifice, a perfect animal. A lamb, in this case, was brought and sacrificed before the Lord. Samuel leads them in this time. And the Lord accepts this offering. How often in our lives we have, in our times of trouble, spoken out or lifted up an act of worship, an act of praise to the Lord, and he has heard and answered. The Lord accepts this offering. And as the Philistines approach and as the battle gets ready to start, he thunders in the sky and he sends loud thunder that freaks the Philistines out. And in the chaos and the confusion that this brings, the Israelites achieve a massive victory over their mortal enemies. The Philistines are beaten and they're driven back. And they don't trouble ancient Israel for some time. Not because of the people, not because of their power or how good their army was, but because of the power of the Lord God Almighty. And it's a wonderful story. After this victory, Samuel took a large stone. And when I say large stone, we're talking Stonehenge. We're talking big. Samuel takes a very large stone and he sets it up between the towns near the place of battle as a monument of worship to the God who saved his people. And Samuel called this stone marker Ebenezer. Didn't expect that, did you? (laughs) All right. So like a lot of things that we find in the Bible, we can read history and we can read uh, the context of the people in that time and place. Relating it to us now is sort of the in-between bit. Reading great stories of... Um, you know, Samuel and how awesome he was and the people and the time and the place. You can sort of be left like, oh, yeah, that's great. What do I do with that? So that's this bit of the sermon. Jeff's strength is uh, history and knowing all that sort of stuff, which is why we changed over. That's not my strength. And that's okay. We're all gifted differently. So Ebenezer is an unusual word. It's not one that we come across much in modern day life. Have you met an Ebenezer? Anybody? No, I don't know anybody personally who's an Ebenezer either. Um, Except maybe you might have come across it in a movie. Yay! (laughs) So, depending on um, how much life experience you have, uh, might be which one is your Ebenezer. So, there's another slide as well. Because there's been quite a few of them. So which one is your Ebenezer that you remember from A Christmas Carol? Some of you might be privileged enough to have seen them all and to know them all. Uh, Mine is on the first slide with the Muppets Christmas Carol and Scrooge McDuck. (laughs) But that might have been the only time you have heard Ebenezer outside of this passage. So the Ebenezer that we're looking at in today's scripture is much more than an odd name or a a, a bad guy in a movie. The Bible is full of powerful words. And if we dig deep enough, the meaning can be life-changing. One such word is Ebenezer. It is easy to read over this scripture and go, oh, that's a funny word and not give it a second thought. Ebenezer is a Hebrew word that means stone of help. In in Samuel's day, it took physical form as an altar to the Lord, a place of worship. A quote from the Expositor's Bible commentary states, It was no no doubt a testimony to the special help obtained in that time of trouble. It was a grateful recognition of that help. And it was an enduring monument to perpetuate the memory of it. 
Now, they use lovely fancy words there, but there's three parts to that. Three things is yes. It's testimony of when they had been helped by God. Grateful recognition of that help in an act of worship in the present, which leads to a greater strength and trust into the future. The purpose of Samuel setting up an Ebenezer stone of remembrance was to help God's people remember the time when they chose to be far from God and the times when they realigned themselves with him so that they're able to again see him and see him at work and hear his voice into the future. Taking the time to pause in gratitude and in praise to God. To reflect on the past, seeing where God had been at work even when they couldn't see it. And to use that to mark this moment in time as inspiration for the future. So the practice can serve us today in our own faith journey. It's not just part of history. We might not be uh, putting up stonehenge size rocks and pillars and markers. But we can still use this practice in the modern day. We can take the time to stop and to raise an Ebenezer, whether it's with a little rock, (laughs) not a big one, or whether it's with pen and paper. Listen to the lyrics that we sung before again. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither, I struggle with that word terribly, hither by thy help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. So I ask you, Today, when has the Lord helped you? When has he answered your prayer for help? When has he proven his faithfulness and compassion to you? Raise an Ebenezer and do not forget it. As followers of Christ, we can raise an Ebenezer because God is our stone of help. He is solid and will help us through the times and trials. We've all had those times when we know that without God, we might not have made it through, or at least not in the same condition that we are at the moment. That's when we can raise our Ebenezers and remember the grace that was bestowed upon us. So today, as we reflect not only on the story of Samuel and the Israelites, but we also reflect on our own journey. I invite you to pause and to take the time to look back, to praise in this moment and to strengthen your relationship with God into the future. See the places where God has walked with you, giving you strength for the road ahead. And we're now going to enter into a time of reflection. A song called Grace will play in the background. If you are a visual person, there are stones, physical stones here, (laughs) that you can come and grab one and sit and ponder with it. You can build a little baby Ebenezer if you want to, if you're that talented to be able to balance them. I'm not. But take this time to mark and acknowledge God at this point. You can spend the time sitting and just contemplating and reconnecting with God. Perhaps your relationship with God needs to be restored this day and it is this moment that you'll choose to enter into that by stating that the 24th of November 2024 is an Ebenezer moment in your life that you can look back on and know that this was important this day. So as the music plays, use the time as you are led. It is your time with God. Feel free to come up, grab a stone, build a little pile of rocks in an Ebenezer if you want to, or just sit and spend time with God in prayer. sinner home from 
sometimes to be worthy of your grace today we worship lord you have always given strength for the coming day and though we sometimes feel weak today we worship lord you have always given peace for the coming day and though sometimes we are anxious of heart today we worship lord you are always light in the darkness when it abounds and though the night is long, today we worship. Lord, you always guide on this journey of life. Even when we are tired or when we try to forge our own path, you are with us. And so today we worship. Lord, we pause to reflect on all that has been, the trials and the tribulations. And as we mark this point in time, today we worship. Lord, you have always spoken through time and space. And today we trust that it shall be so into the future. Amen.
I think about that story, I think about this dirty, great big chunk of granite, just rough cut, and I'm just standing there in the middle of this field. And you know that stone's not going anywhere. That stone's there for a long time so that they can look back and remember that moment where God helped them, the stone of hope. So as we sing our final song, we invite you, and uh, even once the meeting's finished this morning, to come forward and take a stone, if that helps you remember what we've discussed today. That hard chunk of whatever that is, um, granite, whatever it is, that can remind you of that moment in time where God has helped you, where you cried out to him and he answered. And it can be your remembrance of that time in your life. We can each raise Ebenezer moments in our own lives. We don't have to wait for the battles. We can arrange and we can raise them at any time as a remembrance of God's goodness and his love to each one of us. I invite you to stand to your feet as we play our final song this morning. And uh, fittingly enough, it's called Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. <clears throat> I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Let us share in this uh, final song today as our act of worship today, as we raise an Ebenezer in worship to our beautiful Saviour. Let's sing. Sing those words again. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face. Christ alone. in his righteousness alone for us to stand before the throne Christ alone God is stone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the
so today, Lord God, we just proclaim your goodness to all the nations. Lord, we proclaim those moments, those Ebenezer moments in our lives. We lift you up and we take you from this place today with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And a benediction for this morning. Nourished by the Lord's abundant love, go forth with praise on your lips. Reflect on all that has been. Dwell deeply in the now and believe faithfully that God will be ever present in what is to come. Raise an Ebenezer in praise of the one who brings restoration in remembrance of our God who dwells with us and in the confidence of a future assured. Amen and amen.